meeting Paula Sugar and like seeing how inspiring that was, I was like, wow, like this, this is it. Like, this is how it should be. Do they step in and intervene? I mean, I guess it's only them that can really answer that question. Uh, showing women that they can be leaders rather than silencing them. But the problem was that he was deceived. When you're in that position, you also think like, okay, well, if I make them mad, like, and don't do what they say, like they could send the first runner up, they could send a different girl, like maybe they won't send me. And we've got our <laughs> meeting working that took a little bit of troubleshooting. So there's been, wow, a big uprising, uproar, drama, tea, I don't know what you want to call it in the pageant world of Miss Universe Canada. Right, and... <laughs> and now there's a boat going through. <laughs> Layton's apartment. Yeah, I feel like it's been a long time coming, maybe, yeah. with uh, a bit of, like, it's been a volcano of sorts that has, has been just kind of a ticking time bomb of slowly working its way up. And yeah, we've come to this eruption. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out, right? Because it's all very fresh and everything is, is still, a lot of things are coming to the surface right now. I, I want to make one thing clear. Um, we wanted to discuss this because, I mean, you've been involved in the pageant world ever since I've been involved in pageants, essentially, since 2009 when I did my first pageant. And for sure with Miss Universe Canada, I mean, you helped me like prepare in any way that you could. You would help me with interview questions and stuff for Miss Universe. So you've been involved for a long time. So you know what it's been like to be on my my side or not my side but like my end of things you've known like the back end and one thing I just wanted to make sure we made clear right from the start is how this kind of drama if you will started with Michael Cinco um, the handlers of Nova uh, Miguel and Nova we don't know I don't know them personally and we don't know what really happened with that situation we don't know anything about that we just know from essentially my experience being at Miss Universe Canada um, and being Miss Universe Canada in 2016, 2017. I know you initially said on your Instagram story that you did not want to comment on the, the whole situation. So what changed? I didn't want to comment because I didn't know the situation at hand. Like when Michael Cinco, I've never worked with Michael Cinco. So I, I mean, I've always respected his work. I've always shared that some of my favorite gowns ever have been the ones that he did for Iris and for Pia when they passed the crown of Miss Universe. But I didn't want to make a comment because even though I'm well aware of Miss Universe Canada, I mean, I was Miss Universe Canada, I didn't know anything about the situation at hand. So I didn't really want to add fuel to the fire of what was happening because because I didn't really know the back end. But when my good friend and Filipino designer Rian Fernandez made a post, which I mean mentions me in the post, I knew that I had to say something or I felt like I had to say something because one, he's my friend and I need to show my support for him. And two, because I mean, I was directly involved in that whole situation with Rian, the Miss Universe Canada organization. And then the couple years following, I was like a, a bystander, if you will, to what happened with Rian and Miss Universe Canada. Like he would say to me, like, do you know any of this? Like just different things that happened. Like I hand delivered Rian's gowns to Lauren Howe, to which she did not end up wearing. I'm not really sure like why, if that was her or Miss Universe Canada, I don't know. I've always have said that Miss Universe to me and Miss Universe Canada is about representing women and showcasing the women and the talents of the women along with gown designers, sponsors, people who help make it happen. It should not be about the directors, the handlers, like any of that drama. It's just so unfair because it takes away the attention from the girls, the designers, the people who are showcasing their work, their talents. And so when I saw that Rian had made a post, I knew that I needed to say something as well because if anyone hasn't seen it, I have a conversation with Rian on my YouTube channel. I'll link the video in the description box. And he shares like what really happened at Miss Universe 2018 when Marta was supposed to wear all of his gowns and every time she came out on stage or anything she was wearing not his gowns and actually she wore one Michael Cinco gown. I forget what it was, but she wore Michael Cinco, which I think Rian said like that's amazing that's great but the problem was that he was deceived by the Miss Universe Canada organization he was told that he was making gowns that were going to be worn on the stage so had he known and I mean I don't want to speak on his behalf but this is kind of what he shares had he known that 
there's a chance she may wear his gowns. It wasn't guaranteed. That's completely different than sitting in the audience, waiting to see your gown on the Miss Universe stage, and the contestant comes out wearing a different gown. Like, it's just... What, what a heartbreak that would be, right? Is seeing like your hard work and effort. And if anyone hasn't seen that conversation with Rian, he shares that they flew to Thailand twice to fit her. Like they went to Thailand to fit Marta and fit the gowns and everything. They flew back to the Philippines and then they flew to Thailand again to watch the show, expecting to see his gowns and she ended up not wearing them. So I think that someone like him who has so much talent, he's invested so much of his time, energy, his team, he paid for everything. It just, to have it not be recognized in the way he was told it would be recognized is really sad. I just felt like I needed to say something because I admire his work. I, I know what it's like to be deceived and to be told things are going to happen a certain way. And there's a lot more I could say, but I'll try to leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's it's crazy. It's sort of like looking like the perspective you have now on everything. It, it's in, in a way, I don't know. I. I get the sense that like things have sort of come like full circle and in a way you know from from you being a competitor to experiencing these things firsthand to now like all this other stuff coming out it probably takes you right back to like 2016 when you were going through it all personally so so yeah I mean you definitely do have a very unique take on this whole situation and I just kind of want to backtrack a little bit so like your relationship with Rian like if I remember correctly you didn't you didn't really know him kind of in 2016 like you knew that you'd be wearing a Filipino designers gowns but you didn't know also I guess I'll, I'll, I'll let you sort of explain all, all that because I know there's there's some to some stuff to unpack there as well there's a lot of history there and so for those who don't know in 2016 technically 2017 Miss Universe the gown that I wore the white gown that so many people picked apart and everything was actually Rian's gown but I was just told that it was a Filipino designer I didn't know who it was and I was actually just talking about this with Brennan, my husband. When Miss Universe is happening, there's so much going on. You, there's so much happening. So what I'm trying to say here is when I was handed the gown, for those who don't know, I talk about this in many different videos. So there's a lot of you who are going to be very familiar with this story. I was literally handed a suitcase from my director of the Miss Universe Canada team and was basically told like pick the best gown to wear for Miss Universe. This was in the Philippines at the hotel, Conrad Manila. When I flew off to the Philippines, I didn't have any gowns. I was handed this suitcase with these gown options and I chose the Rian gown, not knowing it was Rian's gown at the time because that one of the gowns that I had was the best fitting. It, it was the one that I felt the most comfortable in and I knew I knew it wouldn't be the gown that I would have, you know, chosen or designed for myself. I knew that it needed to be fitted better, but I had no choice. Like there, this was like the day before prelims or the day before finals. I can't even remember. So I chose Rian's gown. And at that time, I didn't know it was Rian. Looking back, I should have asked, hey, who designed this gown and who can I tag? But there's so much going on. You're running on no sleep. Ultimately, I mean, looking back, if I was the director, I would say, hey, Layton, hey, contestant. This is the designer of the gown. This is their Instagram. Make sure you tag them when you make any posts. Like I would give them the information they need because that's to me the responsibility of the team. And so anyways, I wore Rian's gown. Then I received a bunch of messages that the designer of my gown, the white gown had passed away and they, people gave me the name. I had confirmed it with my team and they're like, yep, like that they passed away. And I was like, oh my God. So I made this social media Instagram post saying the designer of my Miss Universe gown has passed away. Rian messages me and is like, hey Sierra, I'm very much alive. <laughs> and so Rian and I talk about this. That's how we got connected is that he was like, hey, I'm actually alive and that was my gown. And so then we got chatting and talking and, and he said, had I known like more about you, that the gown was like for you, this and that, we could have met in like the lobby, whatever, and I could have fitted the gown for you. And I didn't know any of that because I, I just, I didn't know, I wasn't in contact with him. And then he ended up doing my wedding gown, which was really cool a very kind of like cool moment that we were like here's more of a gown that I would have worn at Miss Universe something more fitted for my body and my personality and all that kind of stuff and so that's how we became connected and then you met him you met Rian in Atlanta when we were at Miss Universe you weren't even measured really like for for the gown that you're wearing it like arguably in like the biggest moment of like your pageant life <laughs> so like it's it's craziness and even I mean I look back to like I was there at the airport like sending kind of sending you off back then and like you didn't 
you didn't have your gown with you like at that time and it's 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 crazy to think that you went to a pageant without a gown <laughs> like I don't know it just doesn't, seem, doesn't really seem to add up especially like now I mean you don't need to know a whole lot about pageants to like to know that's messed up but knowing what I know now it just seems so like so strange to me that that you you didn't even really know what you'd be wearing while you're at the competition for sure it was strange and you know a lot of people have said to me when I've shared this story because I've shared this story before on my YouTube channel they said well that's your responsibility like you should have taken initiative and the what I try to tell those people and I, I mean in a way I shouldn't have to like justify myself because I know the real story and what really happened but I was told time and time and time again trust us from the organization trust us we've done this before we've been doing this for 10 years you can trust us you have to trust us we know what we're doing and I would ask call email I even kept like time stamps of like I we had a conversation at this time at this date that my costume I was told time and time again to trust the organization trust the process they knew what they were doing so as someone in the contestants perspective right like put yourself in that position you're going to miss universe you don't know what to expect you don't know any designers you're in canada where people don't really care about pageants and your organization is telling you trust us we know what we're doing you have to trust us don't go outside of us like we're the ones that know everything of what to do like it's almost like manipulative actually when i think about it and it is and so at one point for those who've seen my videos you've already heard this story i actually reached out to miss universe like new york city office miss universe and i was like hey i cannot go to miss universe because basically how i'm being treated what's happening on and on i had phone calls with the organization in new york and they seem to be very understanding and i said like there's i think I can't remember now exactly, but there's like a few very specific things that the organization needs to provide, like your national organization. One is national costume, one is gown. Uh, there's a few other things. I think like flights and stuff like that, that your organization has to provide. And like, I wasn't seeing gowns. I wasn't seeing national costumes. So actually my national costume is one of my favorite things that I brought to the stage at Miss Universe and I completely took initiative of that myself. That was a Canadian designer. It, I was wearing Canadian made mucklucks. So I totally took initiative. They were very against it actually. They were, they wanted a very different costume that was actually then worn by Lauren Howe the next year at Miss Universe. And that's what they wanted me to wear. But I, I wasn't seeing anything. Like they would send me a picture of like material and be like it's being made and i was like how do i how can i trust this how can i just show up so i'm very happy that i took that initiative to get my national costume made by someone in canada she sent me pieces of the costume back and forth via canada post i tried stuff on i sent her pictures and so that was one of my favorite things to be able to walk on the stage i know national costume isn't judged but i was able to represent i had all of the provinces and territories in that back piece Anyway, I took initiative there. I wish I would have been able to take initiative for my gowns, but again, that was my organization was very upset with me that I took initiative to do the national costume. Like you're in that position, you also think like, okay, well, if I make them mad, like, and don't do what they say, like they could send the first runner up, they could send a different girl, like maybe they won't send me. And so you have this like fear and there's just so much unknown. So anyways, I, it's, ugh, I don't know. And, and keep in mind, this was all before Miguel and MG Mode were involved in the organization. So even there's people who are saying like, they need to be removed and I don't know them. I don't know anything about them. I will tell you that the organization itself, I mean, it, it was very difficult for me to work with the organization back in 2016. 2017. Yeah. I mean, I think that all this kind of begs the question of like, where do we go from here? Like what's the, the next appropriate step for the Miss Universe organization? And is there like any kind of repercussions for the Miss Universe Canada organization? Because it, it seems as though there's there are problems. <laughs> I mean, a lot of the, these things that are coming to the surface, it, it seems as though, again, like I, I mentioned at the start, it's been a long time coming. Do, do they 
step in and intervene? I mean, I guess it's only them that can really answer that question, but like at what point do they kind of have to come in and, um, and intervene into the situation? Yeah, I, I'm not really sure 100% what the next steps would be, but I'll tell you something that I think is actually kind of sad, and that is that I've been getting messages from former contestants of Miss Universe Canada, former women who have been in the top 20, the top 10, the top 5 at Miss Universe Canada, and they've said to me, oh my gosh, karma, thank God that this is being um, surfaced. Finally, the voices of the women are actually being recognized. Finally, people are seeing that things are not what they seem. Finally, the truth is coming out. I'm getting so many messages like that. And it's sad because Miss Universe Canada and like this whole thing should be about, like I said at the start of our conversation, celebrating the women, the voices of the women, showing women that they can be leaders rather than silencing them. And for way too long, the women of this organization have been silenced. And if you look back, there's a lot of not only former contestants, but former title holders, like actual women who've carried the Miss Universe Canada title, gone to Miss Universe, represented Canada, they want nothing to do with Miss Universe Canada. They want nothing to do with having been Miss Universe Canada. They are very proud to have represented Canada at Miss Universe, but other than that, they want absolutely nothing to do with it. I know that there are probably exceptions, but when I was competing, there were women who were like, here's what I thought, here's what I experienced. I hope your experience is different. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot. I mean, so I don't know. So what do you, what's your stance on on being part of the organization right now like i know you just recently posted on instagram sort of like a little tidbit of of your info um at least your perspective with rian mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people in the comments saying that like you should be the national director for canada i will tell you it is something i never considered because my world view if you will of what a national director was was not a positive one because of my experiences. But now I have started to see that an organization like Miss South Africa, I admire what they do because what they have done from our perspective, they have created something that is not just about, we're sending one delegate to Miss Universe. It's more so about, look at how amazing the women of South Africa are. Look at these leaders, look at what they're doing. And that's always what I have thought Miss Universe to be, Miss Universe Canada, should be is about celebrating women celebrating talent like designers who are amazing whether they're from your country or not like you don't necessarily yes it would be great to wear all canadian designers but sometimes if you go outside of that that's okay as long as you're recognizing world universe talent because once you get to miss universe you see how like everyone is actually quite similar and like that the world should unite as for myself being involved with miss universe canada i don't really know because i never really thought i would be involved but i just know that my values and what i think miss universe canada should be comes from a place of celebrating the women because the women should be number one celebrating the talent of those involved because it should be highlighted i hope that at the end of the day they look and see if year after year the delegates or the title holder is like this is not not even what i thought it would be in terms of like placing at miss universe but just like how the women are treated you know like this it should be about like you should walk away and be like i had the best experience of my life i enjoyed being Miss Universe Canada. I love representing Canada at Miss Universe. Like, I, what an amazing team. Like, you should be able to walk away feeling better than you did before. And there are women who walk away needing psychological help, honestly. I'm not even, like, I'm not exaggerating. And so that is not how it should be. And I really, really hope that that is recognized because it, like, for something, that's what I have, that's been one of my biggest struggles of, like, promoting Miss Universe Canada and being like, go to Miss Universe girls, like it's the best experience. Because once I got to Miss Universe and I saw how well Miss Universe was ran, the chaperones, the sponsors, um, meeting Paula Sugar and like seeing how inspiring that was, I was like, wow, like this, this is it. Like this is how it should be. So it's just, it's sad to see that it's not quite like that at the national level in Canada, and it could be. I don't know how it could be or like what that would look like, but I feel like it could be. Why not? We have such an amazing country with um, a lot of amazing talent, a lot of amazing women, etc. So I think it's there. I don't know. I, I just hope that Miss Universe, rec Miss Universe organization recognizes that it, it could be different. Right. Yeah, 100%. I think that's probably a good way to, to finish off the video, to be honest. I think... Uh... I hope things work out for the best. 
I mean, of course, it's, yeah, I mean, things right now aren't, aren't very good. No, I, honestly, I hope things work out for the future women who compete at Miss Universe Canada and who go to Miss Universe, because every woman who competes and who goes to Miss Universe deserves a positive experience. To everyone who has commented on Instagram, on YouTube, and shown your support, I appreciate it so much because I know that there have been people over the years who have been like, why wouldn't you have done more? Or basically thinking that I'm kind of like exaggerating or making the story up. So for those who have shown their support and been like, wow, it's all making sense now. Like I've been with you this whole time. Thank you so much. I appreciate it so much. I can't express how much I appreciate it because it feels like finally the truth is kind of coming out and I don't feel like I was kind of silenced and felt afraid to share my voice and my opinion. So thank you to everyone. For your comments and kind words and messages i appreciate it so much i i think the only thing i really have to to say is that you never really know like what's going on behind closed doors and so it's, it, it's so easy to to point fingers and say like you're not this because of that but in, re in reality you don't know like what's going on like within it's just before you make comments like that maybe just be mindful that there are so many things that go on behind the scenes that are out of the contestants control, be nice human beings. <laughs>